Another useful tool in terms of skills and mapping out skills is what we call the skill modes map. This is a very simple two-axis framework, historically actually derived from the work of Carl Jung. But it's, we often describe it as the swamp metaphor. Because it's about, we need different ways of working, ways of thinking, different ways of interacting at different stages in, in any kind of work. As we'll see, it's not about individual people and the mode that each person belongs in, though it's often we will need the different modes across a team. But it's also, people have a particular orientation, yes, but we've got to be able to handle all four modes in order to do the work. Now, it's called the swamp metaphor because imagine a swamp. It's not a, a kind of bleak, muddy mess. It's just every possibility is there. But if you try to stay too long in one place, in the, wrong, in the wrong kind of place, you'll disappear beneath the surface and be gone. So we've got four quite different ways of working, or modes, mindsets, that, to work in that space. The first, if you like, is the artist. You run like hell. You run like crazy. You, you never get, you're always getting lots and lots of new experiences. This is where you get new ideas from. But the moment you stop and say, I found my style, there's a sad little bloop as you disappear beneath the surface. And you also can't really connect ideas together. They're just ideas without any kind of frame. The next one is the, almost the opposite extreme. It's the, the believer. It's about inner truth, about inner absolute certainty. It fits best with things that are certain. It proceeds not even as if something is true, but it asserts that it is true. We believe completely. And this is what a trainee does, needs to do. They need to actually be able to do this. <clears throat> the next one is, um, sorry, that one sticks a pole in a fixed place. And there are people who climb up the pole. They get a better view of the overview of the ground around them. But you're not in touch with the swamp when you're up high up on a pole. Now the next mode is like making a platform. What size is the scientist? We weave a platform between a bunch of poles, otherwise known as the ivory towers of academia. But the catch is that to do this, we're making firm level ground, you know, in the swamp, hobgoblins and foul fiends having rushed away at the sound of the first myth being exploded and so on, that kind of thing. But the trouble is it's no longer the swamp. It's no longer, it actually shuts out new possibilities. So that isn't, that's something we need, that's the theory base. But it isn't necessarily the answer to everything. Enterprise arch architecture, for example, if any form of architecture, is every bit as much art as science. It needs to find the right balance between them dynamically. And we've also got a group of people out on the edges of the platform, or even further beyond, who spread their weight on swamp shoes. <clears throat> they resolve the swamp by staying in one place for just long enough. It's what we call the builder or the engineer or the technologist. For example, is light waves or particles? The answer is yes, therefore no. But I can use an idea rather than assert it is truth. I use it as if it is true, rather than saying like the believer that it is true. These are different approaches, different attitudes, different ways of working. So when we look at them in terms of scan, the, the, the believer is what the trainee does. It's down in that lower lift, are the close to the action and the uncertainty. You've then got in the, in the upper left, still dealing with certainty, you've got the apprentice, who is the, the same as the science, same attitudes as the scientist. The danger is when the science becomes a belief, when we get into scientism, which is not the same thing, where we've made the mistake of shifting, of confusing as if for is. Over on the upper right, we have the, the, the um, the builder, the engineer, we're solving different problems, we're resolving uniqueness rather than trying to force things to fit. And we've also got the artist creating the new ideas. Now we have to be able to move between each of these dynamically. It's not that one is better than another. It's possibly true that one is better dynamically for one purpose than another, which is an issue we'll come on to on the next video. But Overall, we need all of those modes at some point during the development and production of anything in a business. So look at these different modes. The artist, looking at inner value. 
the believer looking at inner truth, the, the scientist looking at the truth in the outer world, and the builder or engineer looking at outer value, the usefulness of things, rather than arguing about the truth. So it's a useful little model to map out what we need dynamically, which mindsets we need dynamically. Because if we don't get the right one at the right time, that's when things start to go wrong. And we'll look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Do look at the YouTube description for links to further detail. And don't forget to subscribe for other videos and also to support us on Patreon to help us produce these videos and the tools themselves.